In the Republican contest on Super Tuesday, there are 595 delegates at stake, 38 from Minnesota. Now, ahead of Super Tuesday, there has been a wave of endorsements for Marco Rubio in what is widely viewed as an attempt by the GOP establishment to stop Donald Trump. Just this morning, former U.S. Senator Rudy Boschwitz became the latest prominent Minnesota Republican to endorse Rubio. Rubio also has the backing of former Senator Norm Coleman and Representatives Eric Paulson and John Klein. Senator Rubio also has the endorsement of former Governor Tim Pawlenty, who is kind enough to join us now. Thank you so much for coming in. Delighted to be here. All right, let me ask you this. Is it too late, this effort by major prominent Republicans such as yourself, to get line up behind a candidate other than Donald Trump? It's not too late, Esme, but somebody's going to have to beat Donald Trump in one of these states coming up pretty soon in order for the Trump runaway train to have an unscheduled stop. I think that's going to be Marco Rubio. And by the way, the opportunities in that regard include his home state of Florida, which is a winner-take-all state with a boatload of delegates. And by the way, a state like Minnesota with a caucus system, relatively small turnout, pretty unpredictable, and a place where Marco Rubio could do well. Well, last time I checked the polls in Florida, Donald Trump was ahead. Yes, that's true. And there's no question Donald Trump is the front runner. Nobody's contesting that. But I think in order for Marco Rubio to be successful, he's going to have to win one of these states coming up. And, and by the way, it would also help if the rest of the field would consolidate a bit. There's some candidates in the field who aren't going to be the nominee, aren't going to be president this time around. And it would be helpful if they would, um, uh, you know, make the decision to get out of the race. What about Minnesota caucuses on Tuesday? The only poll that's been taken a few weeks ago did have Senator Rubio in the lead. What are your thoughts? It's really hard to poll Minnesota caucuses. And I, with the Star Tribune poll had Marco, I think, ahead not only at the caucus level or amongst Republicans, also had him beating Hillary Clinton in a general election. Part of the reason I like him as a candidate, he's not only conservative, he's smart, he's informed, he's strong, and he's electable, as evidenced by that poll. But it's very, very difficult to poll Minnesota caucus attendees. The turnout varies wildly. It's a relatively small group and they're, they tend to be uh, difficult to predict. All right, a lot of hand-wringing amongst Republican Party leaders about what this particular campaign and Trump's success says about the Republican Party. What does it say? Well, it says that it's a party that's not a monolith. You know, you have a party that has been out of power, at least in the White House, but you know, the Republican Party includes national security hawks, it includes economic conservatives, social conservatives, moderates, chamber of commerce types, libertarian types, Tea Party types. And to be a successful party, somebody has to unite that and stitch it together. Rubio can do that. I'm not sure Trump can do that. Is Donald Trump a real conservative? Well, he's taken positions that are not conservative. You know, Marco Rubio came of age of the Tea Party. He's clearly a movement conservative on all the checklist items. You can't say that about Donald Trump. How about uh, in terms of electability, can Donald Trump be elected president in November? The polls would say that maybe. The answer to that is maybe. But I think we'd be much better served having Marco Rubio as our nominee and somebody who clearly does better head-to-head -head than Hillary Clinton in national polls. So you actually think, despite the math and these polls looking ahead to Super Tuesday, you actually think there's a pathway here for Marco Rubio to win this nomination? I do. I do. But it is going to require his candidacy to win some states pretty soon. And I would pay particular attention to Minnesota or a place like Minnesota, but I'd pay particular attention also to his home state of Florida. And again, that's a, the mother, a mother load of delegates right there. Right. Uh, do you and other Republican leaders, I mean, you just came out and endorsed him a week ago, I believe, uh, wish that they had united behind somebody earlier? Well, the, the, the base uh, and grassroots activists, they don't always listen to people who make endorsements. They have some impact. But at, in the end, it's the candidate making a connection with those grassroots activists and grassroots voters. And I think the more they learn about Marco Rubio and the more they learn about Donald Trump, there's a very good chance that Marco Rubio is going to continue to do well. And by the way, this may go on. So if he wins a few states uh, it, and Donald Trump doesn't look so invincible a few weeks from now, it starts to change the narrative. Okay. You were the last Republican to win a major statewide office in the state of Minnesota. That was quite a few years ago. Yes, it was. Um, first of all, are you considering running for office again here or else nationally? I know you ran for president, obviously. Uh, and what's been happening with the Minnesota Republican Party? Well, I'm politically retired, Esme. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and retired means, you know, you're, you've moved on. Uh, but in terms of the Republican Party, nationally and in Minnesota, it's troubled. It's a coalition of disparate groups, and there needs to be a candidate or a voice that brings it together to be an effective place. Uh, and it has to be about this. Look, keep us safe, grow jobs, help us put some money in our pockets. That's what people are interested about. They want to know if you care about their bread and butter issues. And a lot of the stuff that, that is more of a comic book level or, you know, uh, almost a... A, a cartoon level discourse. People want to know, are you going to keep me safe? 
Am I going to have a job? Am I going to have some money in my pocket? Are my kids going to have a good school? Am I going to be able to afford my health care? And is the economy going to be okay? And the rest of it is, I think most people in Minnesota just look at it and go, that's the kind of person I want in the presidency. And I think they'll see that in Marco Rubio. And by the way, he's actually lived that kind of life, the American dream. So he's not just given speeches about it. He didn't inherit a bunch of money. He's actually lived it. He's lived the American dream. And there's a big difference between you know, just singing the song and writing the lyrics. All right. Well, Governor Tim Pawlenty, thank you so much. All Pl right. Pleasure. Thank you.